So, and the next thing goes directly into this. The online world is inseparable from the real world, right? So, the, the, the online world is, is, is not a world. It's part of your physical world. We are online every day, every moment. And whatever you do online can get you in jail easily, right? C can get you killed probably, right? So there's no reason to think, oh, I'm this you know, online anonymous somebody. I have a different persona. You're not, right? Um, and so here's the real story. The real story is there's a couple in, in, I think, Ireland or Great Britain, you know, to make this easy. They own a bar, happy, happy small business owners, and they, they serve drinks, you know, probably much every night of the week, but they decided, you know, at some point they have to just close their bar and have a vacation. Good idea, right? So they post on Twitter, free this week for a quick gossip prep before I go and destroy America. Kiss. So the point here is, um, what does that say, right? So that says in to, to, to their bodies, that means, you know, let's chat a little bit bef be before we close our bar because then we go and have party and they actually want to go, want to, go to New York, to New York. Uh, basically party like through the, through the nights because that's what their word destroy means, partying through the night. Well, when they arrived at the airport, TSA caught them and said, yeah, so you're coming here to destroy America? <laughs> and they were holed at the airport, and they were sent back, and that is just because they were nice, because if you go and say you would destroy America, there could be way other consequences. So here's the other problem. Whatever you do online could be misinterpreted by other entities. And to be frank, if I'm a TSA agent, and it's my goal to actually keep America from destruction, well, wouldn't you detain them? Right? It's the, this is the problem, right? So the problem here is that, um, you know, whatever you post completely publicly will be read by the people in their way. And again, also, yes, uh, TSA and, and these uh, people scan through tweets and scan through Facebook. So you're, you, you can, you, just because it's on the internet doesn't mean you didn't say it, right? In fact, because you said it on the internet, you know, it's way more public. So online actions have real-world consequences. Real-world actions have online consequences. And there's basically no difference. Just really, there is none, right? So two more before we close. So the identity is not guaranteed on the internet. So this is the one that's so funny because I said before, there's no anonymity, right? But then there's no identity either. And if you want to stay with Tinder, how hard is it to create a Facebook profile and appear Tinder as somebody who's completely different? Not hard, you know? Put up a photo, fake a name and an age. Well, that's hard, right? That's not hard at all. So basically, people will trust you, though, and I don't even have to do that experiment. So consider the consequences if the person you're giving the information to is not who she, he or she claims. So basically, um, you know, when you're doing online transactions on Cra Craigslist, there's so much fraud out there, right? Uh, when you do anything on the internet, you just have to assume it's not the person who claims to be. So, right? so don't send anything, don't send money, uh, go meet people in person on a public place you know, when you do transactions like this and so on. Don't give them their address or you know, be, be trustworthy. It, it really, it's so easy to fake an identity. Yes, in the end, if something happened, the FBI will probably find out who it was um, because an anonymity is not there. But it's better to prevent stuff than to be sorry, right? So basically, then there's secondary, use secondary sources of verification. Sometimes, just call them, you know? Oh, right, so a, a call is so, much more sa is so much safer than just a random email. Um, and if in doubt, again, don't share money, information, or whatever with people uh, that you don't know who they are. So now the next thing is, oh my God, you know, maybe I should be anti-progressive. I'm, I'm, I'm doing CS10, but maybe this was all a mistake. I will not be online at all anymore. I will just basically do it all old school, right? So here's your problem. You can't avoid having an information footprint by not going online, right? Why? Well, um, think about the kitten, yeah? If you're a kitten, you're not actively going online. But the point is, um, People share stuff about you. The government shares stuff about you. Uh, your employers share stuff about you. Um, and most importantly, 
Who are your biggest privacy intruders? Your friends and family. Because you go to a party or, or, or you, do, you, you visit them and they're like, oh, it was so nice to have visited them. Boom, you're online. Um, so the best thing you can do about it is you can share what you've learned today with your colleagues, friends, and family because then they can maybe more, uh, uh, you know, uh, more respectful of your privacy, but then also don't post about others, by the way. That's one, one thing that I usually tell people. Why do you post about others, right? Because uh, that's the point. So the next problem is, and that's the final one, who has an interest in maintaining your privacy? Only you yourself have an interest in maintaining your privacy. So the government, as we know, will not be really, I mean, they will do something, but only if you say something. Uh, but in general, first of all, they're not interested in your personal privacy. The industry absolutely isn't, because we've seen all these examples. Um, so your friends and family don't think about it, most likely. So who's really interested in your privacy? Well, you yourself. Uh, I was going to say you, yourself, and I, but this doesn't make any sense. But it's really just you. And now here's the, here's the problem. Privacy requires work. If you don't do anything, if you ignore this, if you do the ostrich approach, you're not private. So privacy requires work. You have to actively search for stuff. You have to actively use encryption. You have to actively uh, try to not be found. Uh, that's the only way you can actually uh, be private. So you have to opt out. Um, so if you want to know, have more information about this, go to www.teachingprivacy.org. And with that, I leave you. Um, and um, there's a lot of entertaining videos on this site. So uh, have a good day. <laughs>